Hello and welcome to another episode of Scott Reed's Comics. Today I'll be covering Dark Horse Presents 149 and 150, both published in 1999 by Dark Horse Comics. And more particularly, I will be covering within these two issues the uh, consecutive installments of The Nevermen that leave off from my last coverage of The Nevermen. So let's start with 149. And again, we have backup stories, uh, Ragnarok uh, by Ryan Sook. And um, this, actually the title story here is uh, Wonderkind uh, by Isaac Buckminster Owens. I'm not gonna go through these ones because I'm just focused on the Nevermen. Uh, these are cool stories in here, these other stories, especially the Ryan Sook stuff, but the Nevermen is what we're particularly interested in today. So here we are, uh, leaving off from uh, our last issue, uh, delving further into the mystery of who the Nevermen are and, and what their true purpose is, how they're going to protect the city uh, from the various super science and supernatural threats that menace it. So here we have Happy Birthday Spider. This is a birthday celebration. And there's neat touches in these that sort of tell us well, we're not, maybe maybe this is Earth, maybe this is some alternate Earth. Like, we've got this character here in sort of a 20-style suit, but he's wearing this weird sash, which kind of is a neat effect. Um, just little touches like that kind of tell us that this isn't quite the Earth that we think it might be. Excuse me, boys. Got ten to some business. Sugar? Too slim. Open me first. So we have this guy, Slim, who might be a scoundrel of a character or a criminal. It's his birthday, and he's going to open this box. And we have a pretty grisly sight here. The Nevermen, Chapter 2, Never Again. Hello, Slim, this disembodied head says. Ah, cadaver! Love the new club. You went all out. You wouldn't have any bird brain schemes about skimming the take, would you? No. No, stupid of me to ask. I like you, Slim. You're a real crackerjack. I got you a little something. Go ahead, open it. Open it? Oh, and we have a disembodied hand that leaps from the package and it begins to strangle Slim. Sorry, Slim, nothing personal. So Cadaver, we're gonna find, is another one of these crazy uh, villains created by Phil Amara and Guy Davis for this series. They really have a neat way of sort of taking classic pulp supervillains and, and villains and kind of making them new and weirder, and stranger, and more scary. I love that effect here in this panel. Even without color, um, Guy Davis is just a master uh, of the black and white medium. Using um, this, this shading here, or lack of shading, on uh, Cadaver's eyes to just show his manipulation of power, uh, his use of power here. What is Cadaver's actual powers? Who knows, but he's really cool. Meanwhile, elsewhere, we have the aftermath of um, that burning of that guy's uh, restaurant, that uh, merchant's restaurant, and uh, one of the Nevermen is there, and so is the murderist. Assuming, I believe, I believe you, that you found Sully that way. This was about protection. Knowing Sully, he didn't want to pay. He used to be one of us. I thought this was about Sully. So again, the murderist was a neverman and then something happened. What happened to you, murderist? I got better. I look out for me now. All the bosses are fighting for territory. Soon, it's all going to unravel. So here we are back at Slim's place. He's been found dead. I could profit from that. Again, that's the murderist. We have things under control. Ha! You don't even know. Up there. So he gestures towards this um, crazy gothic skyscraper that looms over the city. And we've seen that figure watching all the action uh, in the previous story. He controls everything. You're blind if you don't see it. This is a schoolyard game next to what he's planning. Maybe that's what happened to Diggs. Maybe he got too close to the truth. But if I was a betting man, I'd say it was over a girl. Look, if I can squeeze anything about Diggs, 
out of the usual street scum, I'll be in touch. Otherwise, I watch my own back. Less accidents that way. So this just brief bit of dialogue here gives us so much insight into the character of the murderist. Listen, Clement, be careful. I hate when they do that. A little bit of a, uh, a scene here stolen from Batman. The Nevermen um, have a, a way of just sort of exiting a scene. Meanwhile, we're going to meet another uh, criminal character here. This amazing cat burglar with his cool rig. He melts his way into this building. Eh? It's for dealing with you. So he pulls a gun on this Neverman. And then he activates his rig. Not get me. And he repels out onto this crazy, uh, looks like a, a um, plane or a dirigible. <laughs> and he's blasting away as he escapes. Oh yeah, he's on this glider. And this is another of the Nevermen uh, on the dirigible here. In pursuit. So that's where we're left off. Next month, chapter three, Death Come Quiet. So, very cool. Let's jump into the next one. Dark Horse Presents 150. We got Buffy on the cover here. This is a great, actually, really great Buffy story um, to start us off by Doug Petrie, Cliff Richards, uh, Joe Pimentel, and letters by Amador Cisneros. But we are again going to jump um, to our Neverman story. Which is right begins right here why why do they do this so again we have this mysterious individual watching the action that's going on in the city and how is he able he's got this vast surveillance network that he's using so through his eyes we're seeing this insane fight between one another of the nevermen and this um crazy monstrous being and guy davis uh, there's a reason again why i mentioned a couple um or shows ago when I first covered the Neverman, why he's a creature creator for Guillermo del Toro now. I mean, look at this. His imagination, his ability to create monsters is unparalleled. Where did you, where did you think you could hide, Samick? And so the two burst out of the window here, falling earthward here to the ground. Great sequence of panels here where this uh, close combat is going on. And the Nevermen, underneath their trench coats, is an exoskeleton, which gives them the ability to duke it out with um, super powerful beings like this creature, Samick, who, and I love it too, he's, he's not even human. I mean, he's not even speaking any kind of discernible language here, which is pretty great, as he seeks to envelop uh, this Neverman and his maw. Meanwhile, we're gonna shift scenes to a cemetery in another of the Nevermen. And the only way was the stones. Heh heh heh. You mastered my riddle. Manbullion. And this guy here has got some kind of, he's some kind of necromancer. He's from the uh, first uh, story in Dark Horse Presents 148. We, we, we visited him last. He conjures these um, unfortunates from their graves to attack. And again, we shift scenes. Quick, rapid-fire storytelling here because they only have so many pages in this format. Sorry, Laurel. It's a trip to the tailor. So again, we're visiting the murderist here. He cuts this thug's arm off, but this is not your average thug. As many uh, characters in this crazy city turn out to be more than what they seem initially. Yes, murderist. A trip to the tailor. A trip to city morgue for you. Just fantastic scenes of action here from Davis and his mastery of the, of the black and white pencils and inks is tremendous. Another shift in scene here as we see a man being strangled. This is our pyrotechnic, uh, our, our uh, pyrokinetic from issue uh, 148. Another idiot. Nothing. Nothing burns like a home. So here, this never man, maybe he didn't, maybe he just got there or didn't get there in time to save this guy. Um, but now he's looming behind matchstick here, our pyrokinetic. Shifting scenes again. You never saw this. 
this never happened. They fight to take back the city. No, that's not it. That's not all. They're looking for someone. Tell me, what do you know? How do I find him? So we shift to all our scenes here as all the different Nevermen, according to this enigmatic individual, are looking for something else as they battle crime. They're searching for the one from their ranks. He disappeared without a trace. You know, ah, father, you know. So here we get a, a better shot of this enigmatic watcher. And he's, again, some kind of crazed, transformed being. The use of the weird uh, technological uh, augmentations here is, is very creepy in this bottom panel. And this poor guy, if he truly is this guy's father, is in a bad way. And here we have our final page. We have four of the Nevermen here. The night is made safe. Ugh. Gotta get up and do it all again tomorrow. So the murderer stands apart from these four Nevermen. He was once one of them. Now he works alone. They're estranged. And we get this tagline at the bottom. Watch for the Nevermen number one on sale in May. And I intend to cover um, Nevermen 1 and uh, the other issues that are available from Nevermen on the show. Um, I love this introduction to the Nevermen. It's quick, the storytelling is quick, staccato. Um, sometimes it requires a quick rescan to, to, to figure out what's going on. They're working in a truncated format. And that changes a little bit when they shift to the color comic but they still sort of keep that staccato pace of storytelling throughout the seven remaining issues that we'll cover over the course of um, the episodes ahead when we do revisit the Nevermen. But they get more space to move and breathe and the stories are in color too, which is another adds another dimension, which is really great. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Nevermen uh, that I've provided here on the show. If you did, please like and subscribe, tell your friends, let me know in the comments what you think of the Nevermen. In the meantime, I'll bring you more soon on Scott Reed's Comics. Thanks for watching.